Welcome back to Power Public's YouTube channel. Now, today's video is part two of our pre-season race engine preparations. And today we're doing it on the KA100. So a special mention has to go out to our Patreon and YouTube members. We really appreciate that support and couldn't do these videos without you. Today's video was a suggestion from the comment section and for today, we're gonna to be running through a carburetor service, the clutch regreasing, we're gonna be cleaning the Bendix and we're just replacing the spark plug, just for a matter of course. And we'll also check out the front sprocket while we're at it. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the starter motor sub-assembly off the back of the engine. We're just gonna remove all the cap screws for the support bracket, and then we can remove the, the screws that hold the sub-assembly onto the back of the motor. Once the screws are loose, we can remove that sub-assembly straight off the back of the engine. And now we can remove the Bendix cover, or the starter reduction gear cover. This is a plastic cover here, we're just removing those three cap screws. So now that we've got the cover out of the way, we can pull that starter re reduction gear out of the starter motor assembly. And we're get, just gonna start cleaning it, and I'm using some workshop solvent here. But really, it's all sort of built up old chain lube. So I think the best method for that is probably to use some degreaser. Now that we've cleaned up all the sub assembly, it's time to re-lube the bearing in there and the bearings inside the starter reduction gear. We're just gonna use a bit of sort of WD style lanolin or a lanolin based product just to keep everything moving freely. Now that we've got all the chain lube out of the Bendix, we just slide that back into the housing. Grab the cover, give that a spray with some lube and put it back in its home position. Now we can tighten up the screws again using the rattle gun. And then just double check the tightness with the T-bar. Now be careful not to over tighten them because they are just plastic. Now we're moving on to the clutch cover. We're just going to remove the screws that hold that on. Don't forget the ignition wire there. So now that we've uh, got the clutch cover out of the way, we can remove the retaining nut there for the clutch drum, the thrust washer, and remove the front sprocket and the clutch drum there. The little bearings come out with it, but we're gonna clean all this up, just check the condition of the shoes. None of those are broken. We do have videos on that, so if you wanna check them out, you can go through our library and find out how to check out those iAmi clutch shoes. So we're just trying to get rid of all the chain loop here. This is a little thrust washer there. Now that's the internal thrust washer and you can see there's a bevel. So it only goes one way and it's with the chamfer or the bevel, that goes on first. Then we're gonna put the little O-ring onto the end of the shaft. We've cleaned up the bearing. We're just gonna spray that with a bit of solvent too, just to get rid of the old grease. And then we're gonna re-grease it and slide that onto the crankshaft. Get a little bit of grease there, just put that on the shaft, slide the bearing on, and then with a bit of grease on your finger, just rub that onto the bearing. And now we can clean out that clutch drum, and we're gonna, just using a bit of solvent, brake cleaner, and that'll get rid of all the old grease and dust, so we'll just wipe that out with a rag. Now we're ready to slide that on. While we've got the clutch drum off, we want to check and inspect that front sprocket for where those teeth go out of shape, it's time for a new sprocket. So while you've got it off, have a good look, and if you do need to change it, change it out now. Slide the clutch drum back onto the clutch assembly. So you can see here that this little external thrust washer has got some wear on it from where the sprocket's been running, 
So we're just going to replace that while we're at it. Slip the brand new one onto the, onto the end of the crankshaft. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Loctite here. We're going to put, the, put a drop of Loctite on the end of the shaft. You don't need too much, otherwise it's going to gum up on all the washer and stuff as well. You can spread that out with your finger and then do up the clutch nut. That's just a 17 millimeter socket. We're just going to clean out all the chain loop. Once again, I'm using solvent here, workshop solvent, but you probably want to use degreaser. I find that works the best on the old chain loop. So we're going to put the little earth strap back on. Now I'm just using the T-bar here. You've got to be a little bit careful with this screw. It's a pretty fine, it's only into the aluminium. So if you really crank it up, you can strip it. This one's been stripped once before, that's why we're using an M6. It's, it's been oversized. Now we can reinstall that sub-assembly. It's all cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. So slide that back onto the back of the engine. I'm gonna put in some new cap screws here. The old ones were full of Loctite. So I just got some brand new ones. We're gonna slide them in, nip them up with the rattle gun, and then we're gonna do them up nice and firm with the T-bar. So now we're going to reinstall the little bracket that holds the starter motor. It's a bit of vibration dampening bracket. So we just screw that onto the side of the motor, do up the clamp and you're good to go. Okay, so now we're onto the carby. We're going to remove the carby first using a T-bar. It's got the two barrel nuts there. Just take them out. So now that we've removed the carburetor, we can take off the little gasket there, remove the four screws that hold the reed cage in to the front of the engine. We're just gonna pull that out. So we just want to check the carbon fiber reeds for any damage, chipped edges, any holes that have been put in there, and if there is we're going to replace them too. So now that we've got the carby off, and we're going to put a little carburetor kit through the carby, we want to just clean it first because if there's any little dirt and rocks, as soon as we open up the carby they can fall in and just cause more problems when we're trying to sort of create no problems. So first up, we're going to remove the fuel inlet cover. That's just using a flat blade screwdriver. Then we can remove the cork gasket and the screen. Okay, so you can get yourself your new carburetor kit out of its bag. And then with a little T20 Torx bit, I've got this on the smallest rattle gun I've got with the lightest setting. We're just gonna remove all those screws there. Now be careful, they are small and it is only aluminium, so you can damage them easily. So take care here and just remove the screws out of the carby and lay them over to one side. Now that we've got the screws removed, we're just gonna remove all the parts of the carburetor in order and lay them out on the bench. So I recommend doing that if you haven't done it before, just so you don't get mixed up with when you go to reinstall the new gaskets. So this one here is in pretty good condition. It's just coming in for the half year service. So we're just gonna be putting a gasket kit in it. The uh, lever has been bent up here a little bit above the body. So to give it slightly richer conditions there in the float bolt here or the bowl chamber. And then you can see your little main jets here and your, this is the high speed circuit and this is your low speed circuit to, down through this uh, dump tube. So now we can reinstall the new gaskets in the reverse order. Once we've got the carburetor back together, we can reinstall the, the screws. Like I said, they are very small and they can strip easy and also you can break the heads off them, which is a real pain in the neck. 
So just be careful when you're doing up these little screws on the carby. Yeah. So now we're going to put the little gauze filter, the cork gasket, and the fuel inlet cover back on the carby. So now we can reinstall the reed cage and the carburetor mounting block, and then just do up the four cap screws that hold that in. Now that we've reinstalled the reed cage and the carby block, we can put the little carby gasket on there and then reinstall the carby and do up the two barrel nuts that hold the carburetor to the engine. Just make sure when you're doing these ones up, you're using the T-bar and I don't do the first one up really tight. I just get it started, then I get the second nut get it started because they are pretty tight down in the in the carby and if you do one up really tight it can jam the carby up and it makes it hard to get the second nut started. Okay so a nice thing to do before the start of the race season is to put a new spark plug. So we're just going to remove the old spark plug. We're not going to throw it away. We can just put that in the toolbox as a bit of a spare in case we foul one at the track one day. And then we put the new one into the engine and we're going to tighten that down. I like to use a 3.8 drive socket, just tighten that up, and we're going to have to squash the washer down because it's brand new, so just nip it up, back it off a little bit, and then just do it up nice and firm. So as you can see, winning races starts at home. Get your preparation done so you don't have any failures when you get to the track and you can just concentrate on winning races and dominating. Thanks to everybody that has been following along at home, subscribing, liking our videos, turning on those pesky notifications, following us on Instagram and Facebook. Also too, if you want some parts or some more knowledge, you can go to our website www.powerpublic.com.au and grab yourself everything that you need go-karting related. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.